You're muted, Prime Minister. Still muted. It's the icon at the bottom on the left-hand side, remember, that has mute written below it. Right, right, yes. Am I on now? Yes, Prime Minister. Oh, great. <laughs> You'd think after a year of this uh, video business, it would get easier, wouldn't you? Yes, Prime Minister. Right. Well, ha, technology. Good stuff, but not my forte. Where's Leslie? A bit not here yet, Prime Minister. Well, I can see that. Didn't we say 11 o'clock? Yes, Prime Minister, but you know Leslie. <sighs> Always likes to keep everyone waiting, <laughs> even me. Power play. <laughs> You know, that's all it is. People do that when they want to give the impression that they're the most important person in the room, even if it is a virtual room. Yes, Prime Minister. You know, I used to do it myself back in my backbencher days. <sighs> Leslie's not, of course. Prime Minister? The most important person in the room. <laughs> no, Prime Minister. Not even an elected official, just an advisor. <laughs> I could sack Leslie at any time. Everyone needs to remember that. Yes, Prime Minister. Uh, what else is on the table today? Um, Leslie until 11.30, then Sir Francis Shiton straight afterwards. Ah, the old shyster. <laughs> That's what we used to call him at Oxford, you know. Yes, Prime Minister, I am aware. What does he want? He hasn't said. But I assume it might be connected to the Emergency Powers Bill. Speaking of which... Yes. The leader of the opposition is still wanting to speak with you about it. Oh, really? I thought we told him that I was very busy. Yes, I did, Prime Minister, several times. But the emails keep coming. The last one said he can't ignore me forever. Oh, I can, believe me. Ah, I'm not taking the meeting because I know exactly what, what it'll be like already. I mean, Half an hour of haranguing me about how I can't do this and I can't do that and the emergency powers bill undermines the very principles of democracy and I'm leading the country into a dictatorship. It's rubbish. Yes, Prime Minister. What else? Uh, there's a press conference scheduled for this afternoon ahead of the vote on the bill tomorrow. Oh, I don't think that's a very good idea. Leslie won't like it. Can we reschedule for tomorrow after the voting's over and the bill's already been passed, because then I can present it as a fait accompli and do a nice, calm, reassuring speech. The press are accusing you of ducking accountability on the issue. Well, yes, that's rather the point. They'll say you're deliberately going into hiding until after the bill passes. Well, then, what about a nice trip out? That would show them that I'm not in hiding. What about a nice photo opportunity in a hospital with me meeting some doctors? I could wear a white coat. The doctors are all a bit busy at the moment, Prime Minister, as are the hospitals. Yes, right, yes. Oh, well, what about a building site? Nice building site where homes are being built for families. Family homes, the focus of the government. The Prime Minister, who cares about the family home cares about families and recognises their importance. Our individual families, the family of our local community, the family of our great nation. Oh, yes, that sounds good. And I could pose for photos in a high-vis jacket and a hard hat. The tabloids always love that. But we're all supposed to be staying at home. The more restrictive lockdown measures have been in place for two weeks now. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Shame. I do like a nice afternoon jaunt in a hard hat. It's always fun. Yeah, I miss that side of the job. As long as it's only hand-picked press, of course, who don't ask difficult questions. Yes, Prime Minister. All right. Ah, there.
There you are. You're late. Hmm. I got stuck with the kids. Rollo's iPad wasn't working and then I had to make a coffee. Oh, well, as long as it was something important. Anna, you can go now. Very well. I'll be back at 11.30, Prime Minister, to set you up with Sir Francis. Wait, Anna. I'm going to type an email address into the chat. Is it to send a direct link to to join this call for 11.20? Isn't that a bit short notice? The invitation is expected. That's an odd address. Just send the email. Who am I sending it to? You don't need to know, Anna. How about your pay grade? The Prime Minister's official Downing Street conference calls are meant to be for government business only. Ah, uh, yes. Just do your I job, think... Anna. For once. <clears throat> Bibu, is that who I... My kids are very important. I beg your pardon? I take my family very seriously. Don't you ever dare disparage them or me again. I, I, I didn't disparage you. Oh, well, as long as it was something important. Well, that was just a joke. I didn't find it funny. Sorry. You don't ever laugh at me or my family, do you hear? Especially in front of the staff. Staff? Anna! Oh, she's used to me and my little ways. I don't care. You don't speak to me like that in front of her. Ever. Right, right, yes. Why is she still working for you anyway? Well, since lockdown she's been taking care of my office. You're the principal private secretary for that. <laughs> well, he's still officially in charge, but he doesn't really do computers. He's a, a bit useless with the remote meeting stuff, so Anna's doing the day-to-day -day work. What work? You're calling him from home like the rest of us. There's no real office to be working in anymore. Well, I suppose it's a virtual office these days. You should sack her. Oh, good Lord, I couldn't do that. She takes care of all this. Well, what? Oh, this, this... Video business. I couldn't manage it without her. Oh, Christ, you're an idiot. So what? We're more than a year into working from home. And you still haven't worked out how to make a fucking conference call? Jesus! Does she come round to your house and wipe your ass for you as well? You know, Leslie, I really think you could... Sack Just... her. I don't like how she's always around. You don't need her anymore. Well, I assure you, I do. Look, we wouldn't be able to have our morning conferences if she... I could set them up for you. I commissioned this fucking system in the first place. I should be the one running it. But most of it's just organising meetings. A bit boring for you. How do you know what I find boring? Right, right, yes. All right, well, look, well, look let's talk about it after the bill's been passed. Yeah. <clears throat> Who have you got on the slate today? Uh, the shyster immediately after you. He'll be wanting to see what he can get for himself out of the emergency powers bill. <laughs> He's already foreign secretary. You'd think that would be enough. Like it was for you. Hmm? I beg your pardon? You were foreign secretary before I elevated you to your current position. And I don't remember you being particularly satisfied in the job. Oh, well, that was different. Anyway, what do you mean, elevated me? You didn't elevate me. Ridiculous phrase. What else would you call it? You were a backbench joke until I got hold of you. A political buffoon. You never even made it to the front bench without me, let alone Prime Minister. Yeah, but look, I'll have you know, I've been working towards being PM since I was ten years old. Well, dreaming and scheming isn't the same as working. And a dream is all it would have been without me. I raised you this far. And now I'm going to raise you further. Once this bill's been voted through the House, you'll effectively be the ruler of Great Britain. Able to pass anything into law without challenge. Able to suspend Parliament and postpone elections indefinitely. If that isn't an elevation, I don't know what is. You know... 
I still can't believe we're going to get away with it. Are you, you sure we definitely have the vote just to get it through? Of course. The idiot British public made sure of that when they voted for you and your party in such big numbers. Even if every opposition member votes against it, which they will, it'll still pass by around 50 votes. And our own backbenchers, you see, I've heard some mutterings. Oh, some of them are puffing out their cheeks and saying it's an affront to democracy. But it's mainly for show. We might lose one or two who have genuine principles, but most of them are like your, uh, oh, Sir Francis fuckwit friend, objecting just to make a noise and see what they can get out of it. I made a few promises here and there to ensure they stay loyal. Yeah, what sort of promises? It doesn't matter. You won't have to keep them. Once this bill passes and you've suspended Parliament indefinitely, MPs will be a thing of the past. Ah, yes, now we'll need to work up to that. You know, go carefully to begin with. Get people used to the idea before we have a wholesale colour of the commons. It'll be fine. People want strong leadership at the moment, and you are going to give it to them. Oh. Yes, right, right. This is the kind of opportunity that only comes along once in a century. If that, a global pandemic trapping everyone in their homes, a frightened and frustrated population being directed by the mainstream media to take it out on everybody but us. An opposition that no one's paying any attention to. Oh, it's golden. It's huge. No journalists can rant all they like about democracy being obliterated, but the people have spoken. They voted for you. They handed you a huge majority. And that majority will get this bill passed for its third reading tomorrow. And what about the Lords next week? A formality. A few might pretend to object, but they won't when it comes to it, because most of them are captains of industry and big tech billionaires who we've elevated to the peerage. They know the value of being able to do business without the red tape of democracy. Tomorrow afternoon, you'll be the de facto dictator of Great Britain for life. Then the real work starts. Yes, important work. What will we be doing? I've got a whole programme laid out. We'll talk about it tomorrow once the bill's passed. Right now, we need to deal with that other matter. Other matter? Oh, yes, right, right. That matter. Uh, uh, that, um, <clears throat> oh, where's it gone? There we go. That, uh, right. Um, look, listen, that, Bibu email address. Is that really who? Yes. Do, do, do you really think? Yes. See, I'm not sure it's a good idea to have <clears throat> Bibu involved. Chris is the only one with the capability. Besides, you're in a hole potentially over this. The news is all over social media. It's this morning's most shared item. Uh, what exactly are they saying? You know what they're saying. Yeah, yeah, but how is it being represented? Exactly as you might imagine. Ten years ago, on bonfire night, you hired a hitman to have one of your political rivals bumped off. If he wasn't an actual hitman... He was a man who offered to kill one of your parliamentary colleagues. For money. Which you gave him. What else would you call it? Well, 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 well I, I, I wouldn't necessarily frame it in those terms. I mean, I, 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 I think the truth in, in this situation is governed by a more complex set of parameters that need to be very careful. Do, um, uh, do what? Talk to me that way. What way? Politico speak. Save it for the journalists and the gullible public. The fact is, the guy has given an interview. It's out there. The police are ignoring it for now because I have dirt on the commissioner and the press is largely ignoring it because the CEOs of the news corporations are just as anxious for the emergency powers bill to go through as we are. Well, that's lucky. Not really. 
No democracy means no accountability for them. No pesky independent press standards organisation to hassle them or no office of fair trading stopping them from taking over other companies and expanding as much as they want. Right, right, yes. A couple of independently run media outlets that are still out there are going to town. They've christened it the Guy Fawkes plot. And now it's got its own hashtag. You know, I was hoping that the current royal family hoopla would eclipse it. Oh, yesterday's news. This is today's. And we need to manage it. I don't want the story blowing up even further just before the vote on the bill. And you really think Bibu is the right man for the job? Definitely. Oh, hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Hi, Chris. Hi. Uh, Bibu. Gosh, how lovely to see you. It's been quite a while. Five years. Got, gosh, really, that long. Uh, well, well uh, how are you? I'm fine, Dad. Can you not? Not what? Call him Dad. Oh, it's just the three of us on the call, isn't it? Yes, but you need to get into the habit of not mentioning it. One scandal per day is enough. Well, I've had plenty of practice at not mentioning it. <laughs> I'm fine, by the way. Thanks for asking. How are you? Oh, I am. Uh... He's fine. Do you have the video? Uh, yeah. What video? Chris is the best at this game. Oh, yes, yes, Aaron, it's, it's, it's amazing stuff. Uh, technology. <laughs> It's fine, Dad. I mean, Prime Minister, I know you don't have a clue about what I do. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I know it's computers and what have you. I mean, you're quite a big noise in the tech world now, I believe. I run the largest digital manipulation service in the world, Dad. Uh, uh, Prime Minister. Yes, 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 yes. Filters and all that. All the rage now, I gather. We, <laughs> we had a virtual birthday party for Leslie last week. Ah, and without saying anything, Anna added a filter. That <laughs> you don't have to tell that story. Oh, but it was very amusing. Watching you give your thank you speech as a giant lizard. <laughs> Hilarious. Never underestimate the amount of money that can be made from making people look like twats. Oh, Dad's done all right out of it. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> The point is, there are more applications to digital manipulation than just turning people into lizards or cats or whatever. Faffs. What? Faffs. That's what most people use digital enhancers for. They use them on social media pictures to make them look sexier. We call it a faff filter. A faff as in faffing around? Oh, no, uh... F-A-F. -F. It sounds for fine as fuck. Much as I love hearing about all the useless shit that morons waste their time and money on to stroke their own pathetic egos, we do have more pressing matters to attend to. Well, oh, that's ironic. What is? You talking about ego stroking. <laughs> and what's that supposed to mean? Nothing. No? Come on. If you've got something to say, come out and say it. I'm listening. <laughs> I just mean politics is all about ego stroking, isn't it? Politics is about power. And chasing power isn't a form of ego stroking? Shut up, Chris. No, 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 no. come on, let's keep the conversation civilised. As long as people are playing with my filters, they're not paying attention to what you and your mates are up to. Which is rather convenient, isn't it? Especially at the moment. Well, you wouldn't be here if it wasn't. Can we get back to the point now? It, what is the point? Chris's company doesn't just allow people to fake their own hotness. They can fake other things, too. Deep fakes. What? It's a way of manipulating footage to make things appear to be happening when they're not. Right, right, I see. No, you don't. What? Make a pardon? You don't see at all. You're nodding your head and pretending you understand, but you have no idea what we're talking about. Chris, 
play him the clip. Oh, right. Um, okay, my screen sharing. Okay. Oh. Okay, watch this. Right, yes, it was I, I. Just glad I was on the spot to be of service. Oh, you were wonderful. I don't know what I'd have done if you hadn't been here. Well, I'm glad you're all right. Uh, do you think you should go to hospital or something just to get checked? Yeah, no, no. I, I, I'm fine, I think. I'm not even singed, thanks to you. Great, great. Right, well, you take care of yourself. And remember to support your local hospital. Oh, I will. I will. Thank you. Thank you so much. Ah! Gosh! Look at that! Yes. What is it? Phone camera footage. Not actual phone camera footage. As close as I'll ever be. The 5th of November, 10 years ago. Islington Council was having its annual fireworks display and the theme that year was vampires. <laughs> Look, you can see a Roman candle display in the background, lighting up into a portrait of Robert Patterson. Who's he? Oh, he's an actor. He's quite big at the time. The Islington display always runs from 7 to 8 p.m. on bonfire night, or it used to, before it got cancelled. Yes, why did that happen? It seems a shame. It was jolly. Austerity. The council couldn't afford it anymore, after you slashed their budgets. Oh, right. The point is, your hitman claims in his interview that he met you that year in a Fulham pub at 7.15 on the night of the 5th of November. No, no, he's not my hitman. No, he's just the man you hired to take out one of your opponents. Be that as it may, you see, the semantics of the situation are very important and we need to avoid making uh, unready judgments ab about... Stop it. What? Politicoing. Oh, right. Right, sorry. Sometimes I just slip into it. You, you, you didn't actually do it, did you? Do what? Hire someone to kill the transport secretary. Well... To be fair, he wasn't the transport secretary at the time. I mean, I read the interview this morning, but I, I assumed it was just fake news. Yes, yes, exactly. Fake news. Great phrase. Must remember to thank the Americans for that one. But, but... Did you? Did I... Did you pay to have someone murdered? He couldn't have. Because he was at the Islington firework display that night. And now we have the phone camera footage to prove it. You do know this is me you're talking to, right? I made the video. Gosh, did you? How clever. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Uh, 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 Prime Minister. Yeah. Video just confirms what we already know, that he was there. No question. You were there, weren't you? What? Oh, yes, yes, yes. No, no question. Absolutely. So you see... It's not a lie, it's just a supplement to the truth. To defeat the people who are spinning lies about your father. I thought we weren't mentioning that he's my father. We're not, but you do understand. Sure. Right, then we go live with this today. I'll get it leaked to one of my pet producers at the BBC in the next half hour, then we'll catch some lunchtime news. Gosh! Right, right. Well, I suppose I'd better get a statement ready then. Um... Don't bother. I've already got three junior MPs lined up to do online interviews on your behalf, denouncing the fake news media for making such a serious accusation against the Prime Minister, especially when, in fact, it turns out he was performing acts of public duty and heroism at the time when the crime was supposedly committed. Right, right, great. What was I doing exactly? You were saving that woman. Right, right, yes! <laughs> From what? From a firework! Yeah. Big 
flew off course and hit her and you grabbed it and stamped on it to put it out. Right, right, of course. You don't remember doing it? Oh, yes, 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 that's absolutely the old memory isn't as good as it was, but yes, I remember it perfectly now. And you were there that night to, to, to help with the collection for the local hospital? I was, I was. Look, you can, you can see it on the video. I'm, I'm wearing a, a high-vis jacket with Help the NHS written on it. Dad, I put you in that jacket. Did you? Yes, I made the video. It's a fake. Yeah, but well, well it, it, it's remarkable, remarkable. Just, just as I remember it, it's all coming back to me now. Quite a shock at the time, you know. But one does what one can in these sorts of situations. Sure. OK, that's that little problem taken care of. All right. Uh, and um, you think people will believe it? It's a very good fake. Most people aren't even aware that deep fakes can be that sophisticated. Making it look like 10-year-old phone camera footage is quite an innovation. Is it? Right, right. Yeah, it's brand new tech. I developed it myself. Right, yeah. right. And even if some of them do question it, it doesn't matter. They can't know for sure, and it'll keep them distracted while the bill goes through its final reading tomorrow. Excuse me, Prime Minister, it's 11.30, and I have Sir Francis Shiten waiting to enter the call. Yes, yes, right. OK, I'm off. But don't you want to be there where I talk to the shyster? No, I think I'll let you handle him. But what if he threatens to derail the bill? Find out what he wants and offer it to him. <laughs> and what if he wants to be PM? Fine. Offer him that. Tell him you're only planning to stay in office for another three years and then you're going to, to retreat to a yacht in Cyprus. Tell him you'll make him Deputy Prime Minister next week. No, 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 tomorrow. And then leave him the keys to the kingdom after you've retired. It, it, but what about the current Deputy PM? He's expendable. You want me to sack him? Why not? Unless you prefer to do it the old fashioned way with your Guy Fawkes friend. Right, right. <laughs> Good joke, very funny. Right, yeah. <laughs> Sir Francis, Prime Minister. Uh, right, right. <clears throat> oh, I'll be going then too, Prime Minister. Take care. Right, right, yes, well, thanks, people. Very useful. Oh, glad I could help. Perhaps when this is all over, we could meet up for lunch sometime? Oh, absolutely. Great, yes. I mean, you can fix something up with Anna here. She'll get you an appointment. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, I'll look forward to it. Right, right. Oh, and uh, uh, do uh, pass on my regards to your mother uh, w w when you see her next. Seriously? Christ. Uh, 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 sorry, what, what, what's the problem? Mum died last year from the virus. You sent a fruit basket. Fruit basket? Oh! Fruit basket, yes, yes, right, of course, fruit. Yes, the very best. I, I, I sent the very best. Great. Uh, yes. Well, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. It's, uh, so sorry for your loss. Uh, of course. Yes. Your mother. Um, it, it must have been terrible. Ter ter terrible f f for you uh, and her, of course. T t terrible. A awful. Uh, yes. Uh, my memory, you know, it's not what it was. Terrible the way I forget things these days. Awful. Yeah, this virus, you know, it's, it's just just a terrible thing. So many people, so many lives, many lives, many, many of us have lost loved ones, of course. And it, it, it's absolutely terrible. Absolutely. So many lives, so many people, your mother, other people's mothers, so many, so, so many we're, we're close to, so many family members. It makes us realise just how important our families are to us. Mothers, fathers, children, aunts, uncles even. Oh yes, it's quite terrible, our families.
I mean, the family unit, so important, the family within our local community, the family of our great nation. Yes. Oh, Christ, I'm out of here. Yeah. And me. Um, bye then. Goodbye. It was nice to meet you. Yeah, yes, yes, absolutely. Bye. All right. I'm letting Sir Francis in now, Prime Minister. Yes, right. Uh, you're staying, though, aren't you, Anna? Sir Francis has requested a private meeting, Prime Minister. Yes, but Leslie isn't here and I might need backup. I need technical backup, I mean. I see. I mean, couldn't you just loiter in a corner? Well, I suppose I could stay online and hide my presence in the meeting so that I'm on hand in case you need anything. Can you do that? Yes, because I'm the meeting host. Meeting host? The person who sets up the meetings and sends out the invitations. It gives me special powers. Right, right. And one of these powers is invisibility. <laughs> sort of. It's a perk of the new Downing Street video conference system. Right, right. Great. Do that then. Very well, Prime Minister. Once you and Sir Francis are settled, I'll hide myself. Letting Sir Francis in now. <clears throat> are you there? Yes, yes, we're here. I can't see you. Right, well, we're here. Well, there's a funny little circle going round on my screen. It's your laptop buffering, Sir Francis. You'll be able to see us in a minute. Buffering? It just means your computer is taking a while to download the data it needs for the call. Yes, yes, I know that. I'm not an idiot. No, Sir Francis. Ah. Ah. There you are. Ah, now I can see you. Where have you gone? What? We can't see you. But I can see you perfectly. No, we can't see you. I think you must have accidentally switched off your video feed, Sir Francis. My what? Your video. Bottom left. There should be a camera icon with the words start video underneath it. it next to where it says mute. Yeah, of course there is. I, I know that. There. <laughs> Right, great. Nice to see you, Shyster. Ah, and you. Been a while since you stopped holding online cabinet meetings. Yes, well, Leslie thought it was better to use email until we got the secure system up and running. Which it seems to be now. Right, yes, well, I'm uh, 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 still getting used to it, but we're, we're nearly there. Well, gentlemen, I'll leave you to it. Uh, been keeping busy recently. Uh, not so many fun foreign office jollies these days. Uh, not whatsoever, alas. There's always plenty to do in the garden. And you're still keeping in touch regularly with all your foreign counterparts. Oh, yes. Your Svengali Leslie sees to that. Leslie is not my Svengali, just an advisor. Well, your advisor is making sure we all stay busy as bees in our own separate departments. I would almost think there was a plan afoot to distract us. Oh, 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 I don't think so. What could Leslie possibly be distracting you from? Well, there's this bill reading in the House tomorrow. Ah, well, no, 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 it's not actually in the House. We're doing it remotely on here. Are you sure you can get 650 MPs all on one conference call? Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Anna's sorting it out for me with, with this new video system thingy. She says it's possible. You are good. Because unlike our previous virtual parliamentary sessions over the last year, I have a feeling more than three people might turn up for this one. I do hope so. Democracy in action and all that. <laughs> Quite. Although it's funny. Someone in my department accidentally scheduled a very important video conference with a Chinese ambassador right at the same time as the vote. Really? Yes, quite by accident. I'm sure nothing to do at all with your advisor, Leslie, of course. No, of course not. 
Because if I were to turn up at tomorrow's reading of the bill and say it was a gross attack on the rights of the individual and the institution of democracy and should be voted down, that wouldn't bother you. Or Leslie, would it? Would it? Well, you've got the votes already, haven't you? Have we? Oh, of course you have. You don't need mine. So even if I said my piece and shook my fist, it wouldn't make any difference. Even if the transport secretary shook his fist, likewise. And the 20 or so backbenchers with whom I've been keeping in constant touch since lockdown. No, right? There is the new e shits committee, of course. e shits Oh, yeah, haven't you heard? Ethical standards for the house in technology servicing. They're very concerned about what's been going on. They think you're manipulating the new digital system for conducting parliamentary business to get the votes you want. Oh, come on, shyster! You know I don't have that tech savvy to pull off that kind of thing, even if I wanted to, which I don't. Yeah, but your advisor might, or, or might know people who might. Anyway, there have been rumours. What sort of rumours? Oh, you know. That the number of digital votes recorded in the second reading of your bill didn't quite tally with how the MPs actually voted. Nonsense. It's absolute rubbish. Absolutely. But of course it is, but you can't stop people gossiping. Even if the members' dining room is currently closed until further notice. Now, look, if people are really worried, they should bring their concerns directly to me. Yeah, I've heard the Leader of the Opposition has been trying to do just that, but it seems you're never available. Well, I've been very busy. Oh, of course you have. It doesn't matter anyway. There are only... Hmm, let's see. 30 or so members of your own party who are complete e-shits. But then again, there are others who might be willing to join them if they knew they had the numbers. The Transport Secretary really doesn't seem to be very keen on you at the moment for some reason. And if my 20 backbenchers were to follow suit? Uh, uh, what do you want, Shyster? Your job. Right. Right, I see. Fine. You can have it. It's a nightmare, frankly. It's far more work than I ever imagined it would be, and it's a bit of a thankless task. I've aged ten years in the last two. Strictly between you and me, I'll be glad when the whole wretched thing's over. Really? Yes, really, but... Oh, no, but look, you see, I, I can't just abandon ship in the middle of the pandemic, can I? It's not the done thing. Doesn't look good for the party. Or my successor? Mm, suppose not. So let's think about this. Wait a minute. How about if I do, say, three more years, just to get us completely over the pandemic hump, and then retire early to Cyprus? I have this gorgeous yacht moored there, just waiting for me. Do you know Cyprus? Never been. Oh, it's gorgeous. Gorgeous. Sun, sea, beautiful beaches, fish, gorgeous. I can't wait to get back there, honestly. Just dreaming about the day when I can do a bunk from this place and spend a few months just living on the boat, catching a few fish. Gorgeous. So, I'll be off to do that and you can have the keys to the kingdom. Now, what would the Deputy PM have to say about that? Nothing. You can have his job if you want. Tell you what, how about I organise a reshuffle, especially for you, tomorrow afternoon, right after the vote? Well, <laughs> Prime Minister, you know best. Right. Yes. Are we clear then? As crystal, dear boy. Oh, by the way, are you going to the reunion tonight? What reunion? Our old college reunion. 35 years since we all left the alma mater. They're having it for one of these video sessions. Not the same, of course. No, no, I don't think I'll be there. I, I, I spend quite enough time on this wretched thing as it is. And 
I'm not supposed to use the new system for social activities. Ah, well, it goes with the territory these days, I suppose. <laughs> oh, give your regards to Pookie and Fizzwiz. Oh, and Jaunty and the twins when I see them tonight. Although, of course, you'll be seeing them yourself tomorrow for the virtual vote on the bill. It's extraordinary how many from our old stomping ground ended up in Parliament. Yes, well, we were a very talented year. Yes, that must be it. See you for the boat tomorrow, then. Bye, Shaisa. Love to the wife. Has he gone? Yes, Prime Minister. Good Lord, that man is a shit. Yes, Prime Minister. Well done, by the way, keeping yourself hidden. That's a very neat trick. I would have had no idea you were on there. Indeed, Prime Minister. Although it's not something I would want to use on a regular basis. It doesn't seem quite honest. Oh, no, no, uh, absolutely. You're absolutely right, right, yes. Good to have in your back pocket, though, so to speak, if and when needed. Of course, Prime Minister. Right, right. Well, look, uh, I need to get off this blasted computer for a bit. Have some lunch. Very well, Prime Minister. Shall I call you in an hour? Better make it an hour and a half. No, make it two. I might have a, a nap after lunch. Very well, Prime Minister. Right. Uh, can you switch me off from your end? Yes, Prime Minister. Doing so now. Right, right. 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 Yes. Great. Absolutely. Oh. Oh, hi. Hello. <laughs> that was quick. Yeah, yeah, I just happened to be looking at my mail when your message came out came in, yeah. Where's the Prime Minister? He's just gone to grab a quick bite to eat, but he'll be back in less than five minutes. Meanwhile, I can keep you company. Are you okay if I call you Chris? Sure, why not? I just wanted to check. The emails I've been sending to you seem to be addressed to someone called Bibu. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just a nickname. One you gave yourself? No, one, um, it was one that was given to me when I was first born. Apparently, I used to make a noise that sounded like, beep boo, beep boo. Yeah. <laughs> Do your parents still call you that, even now? My mother doesn't. Didn't. And your father? Yeah, he does, but he hasn't seen me so much since I was born, to be honest. Ah. Families. They can be tricky. Yeah. Well, good to meet you properly, Chris. I'm Anna. Oh, I know. Yeah, Dad, Dad. Uh, the Prime Minister, uh, you're his secretary, right? Um, no, I'm the first assistant to his principal private secretary, which, as the PPS is a technophobe, means I've basically been running the PM's life for him for the past year. Oh, I thought Leslie did that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, let's just say I run the bits that Leslie doesn't think are interesting enough to warrant attention. So, how can I help? Oh, it's not me that needs your help, it's your father. Oh, you know about that? I know all the secrets. It comes with working in the back room. Of course, yeah. No, it, it makes sense that you would. It's just, I didn't realise he told anyone. At all. 
Leslie knows too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Leslie knows, but that wasn't Dad's doing. No, uh, in spite of his bumbling appearance, he's actually pretty good at keeping secrets when he wants to. <laughs> yes, he is. I don't think it was his intention to let anyone find out, but Leslie has a really good private investigator who tracked us all down. All of you? All the PM's children? Well, the illegitimate ones. I mean, the latest two didn't need tracking down because, you know, they're official. <laughs> but the rest of you, Leslie found out about you all. Yeah, yeah. I think it's an insurance policy. Or blackmail. <laughs> Did I understand correctly from your father that you're the eldest? No, 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 no. Uh, Sammy's the eldest, but she's in a home. Of course, Sammy. Forgive me, a home? Sorry. <laughs> it's just my embarrassed euphemism for saying that she has a learning disability. A severe one. I see. I didn't know that. Oh, I can imagine Dad wouldn't mention it. He never goes near her. I used to go and visit every so often before lockdown, but I don't think anyone's seen her for the past year. Even her own mother. Her mother? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Weird woman. I've tried reaching out to her, but she's still fixated by the fact that she was the first one to bear him a child. She always saw my mum as the, the woman who replaced her and me as the one who stole his affections from Sammy. Like he would have cared for her anyway, even if he had stuck around. He doesn't really care about any of us. He has his legitimate family now anyway. And I don't know how he is with them, but he certainly doesn't make any effort to see the rest of us. I think he might have genuinely forgotten about Sammy or blocked her out of his mind. And apart from Sammy's mother, do you get on with the others? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Fran's lovely and so is her mum. She and my mum actually became good friends later on when the dust had settled. Uh, Daisy too, um, Daisy and uh, Pete. Uh, we don't see much of Alex, of course, since um, she and her mum emigrated. But we've all met up by video chat a couple of times during lockdown. It's like a great big club, the Byblowers Club. <laughs> I see. How nice that you will keep in touch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they're my siblings. Well, half-siblings, at least. And it makes it easier when you're growing up in the shadows to know that there are others out there that are in the same situation, going through the same thing. It's a form of solidarity. Of course, it must be. Will he be here soon? Yes, I'm sure he will be. I'll um, message him and tell him to hurry up. <laughs> I'm sorry you don't see much of him. Hmm. It must have been very hard when you were younger. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. I hated him for the longest time. Half of me still does, to be honest. <laughs> but the other half still waiting, still hoping that one day he'll notice me. Acknowledge me, hug me, and welcome me into his family. Hard not having a father. Mine died when I was a teenager, so I know a little what it's like. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. But I don't think I had it as bad as you. At least I knew my dad loved me and would have stayed with me if he could. I didn't have to hide who I was or pretend I wasn't his child just to protect his reputation. That must have been very difficult. Yeah, yeah, it was. Leaves you feeling like you're nothing. That you count for nothing and in your darker moments it makes you feel as though the world would just be a better place if you were nothing. He never existed in the first place. Don't say that. It's not true. No, no, of course not, no. I mean, if I'd never been born, who would have been there to invent filters that turn people into cats? <laughs> <laughs> it's a service to mankind. 
I love those filters. Oh, I heard you turned Leslie into a giant lizard. <laughs> I did. Yeah. <laughs> Although I claimed it was an accident. <laughs> Wish I'd seen it. Oh, there's recorded footage of the incident, which might leak out one of these days. You never know. <laughs> you must see it all doing your job. Yeah, a lot of it, yeah. It's scary stuff sometimes. Yeah. Invigorating, though, I should think, being the centre of the buzz, the centre of power. Yeah, in theory. That's why I chose this path, to be close to the centre of things. How did you get into it? I mean, I can't imagine that when you were a kid you thought, one day, when I grow up, I want to be the, the first assistant to the principal private secretary of the Prime Minister of Great Britain. Actually, when I was an adolescent, I fantasised about becoming Frankenstein. The monster? No, the person who created the monster. Hmm. Only I didn't want to make a monster as such. I just wanted to be able to bring people back to life. Specifically my father. I get it. Of course, in reality, I knew that reanimating the dead wasn't perhaps a viable career choice. So I decided that what I really wanted to do was become an MP. Ooh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Does it surprise you? Yeah. Men like your father and his friends grow up into politics. And I did too, in a small working class way. Your dad? He was a miner and a trade unionist in the 80s. There were strikes. Terrible strikes. Yeah, I've read about them. Weird to think now. There are hardly any coal mines left. Back then, coal drove the British economy. But it was a filthy job. And it led to a filthy, bitter war when the government decided to start closing down the pits. Was your father uh, killed during the strike? Not directly. But indirectly, we had nothing, <laughs> literally nothing, to eat. My father went without food so that I and the other kids in my street could have a meal. But it wasn't just the bodily starvation that got to him. It was the starvation of hope, of fairness. It went on and on, grinding everyone down, and eventually it ground down my dad until there was nothing left of him. His heart gave out. I'm so sorry. I wanted to become a politician. Actually, I wanted to become Prime Minister so that I could ensure what happened then never happened again to anyone. I mean, the pits would have closed in time anyway, but it didn't have to happen like that. It's a shame you didn't become MP. Oh, I did. No. Yes. <laughs> I stood in a by-election in my early 20s after the local shit in office had to resign over a sexual harassment scandal. And I did it. I got elected. I was an MP for 18 months. The youngest in Parliament at the time. That's so cool. Not really. I was a backbencher. One of those losers who cares passionately about their constituents and genuinely wants to help people. Mm. I got jeered in the house, ridiculed by the old boys club, groped by the chief whip and nicknamed the political prostitute by the press just because I was a young single woman in Parliament. That's awful. It was a lesson in politics. And the next general election, I was booted out by one of your dad's spotty Oxford chums. But by that time, I'd been here long enough to see how things work. I could see there was actually room for a young woman here, provided you knew your place and took the kind of job that was expected of you. That is, as a clerical staffer. Wow. I swallowed my pride called a couple of friends I'd made in the civil service and managed to get a job with them. And then 15 years ago, I joined your father's support staff. I've been with him ever since. Weird. 
Why? He ended up working for the opposing team. It was a job with decent prospects. Clerical prospects, at least. And at the time, your dad didn't seem to be quite as... Well, quite as awful as some of the others in his party. Not exactly a dream come true, though. No. But I do get to see it all. Have you seen much about this bill that's being voted on tomorrow? Oh, God, yes. It's terrifying. I try to ignore politics. I mean, my experience with Dad's kind of put me off. Ah, I can but see how it would. I can't ignore this. I mean, it's everywhere. Have you seen the protesters massing across Westminster? The footage of the crowds is terrifying. I find it rather uplifting. They shouldn't be out there at the moment. It'll turn into a massive super spreader event and the, and the virus numbers will just rocket. In the video I saw, most of them seem to be wearing masks. But there's too many of them. They must be nuts. I think they're risking one danger in an attempt to ward off another. What danger? The danger of democracy ending as we know it. That's not going to happen. I assure you it is. That's what the Emergency Powers Bill is for. To suspend Parliament and give the PM unilateral power over the government, the courts and the... You make sound, that sound like an autocrat. And he will be. No, no way. No, he couldn't pull off something like that even if he wanted to. Oh, in normal times, probably not. But these aren't normal times. Poverty is on the rise. Living standards are plummeting. People are angry. And refugees and foreigners are somehow getting all the blame for it. It's a mess. It was a mess before the pandemic hit. And now, on top of that, everyone's confined to quarters. Tired, miserable, demoralised and distracted. But Parliament, the other MPs... Leslie has used lockdown as an excuse to switch to this new digital parliamentary service so no one has to go into the building. It's been specially developed for us by one of the video conferencing giants. Isn't that good? I mean, it's keeping everyone safe. Safe? And at home. Say what you like about the Palace of Westminster, but at least it reminded MPs of why they were there. And it fed the egos of the feckless ones just enough to make them feel important. But now they're all stuck at home, just like everyone else. No special treatment, no Westminster privileges. All they have left are their private schemes for getting more power, more influence and more money. But you can only get so much more when there are pesky things like democratic accountability to pay lip service to. But... They wouldn't. I mean, they wouldn't vote to destroy Parliament. They'd be killing off their own existence. Their own existence as MPs, perhaps. But there are other existences, Chris. Shinier ones. A king needs his court and a court needs courtiers. Well paid, well polished and with no constituents to bother them. Shit. Yes. We have to do something. We have to say something to him. You say something to him if you like, not me. I'd be out of my job in three seconds. Leslie is already circling. But you got into politics to help people. I did. And when I failed, I took a job in the back room because I thought that's where the power was. I thought I might be able to change things from the inside. If there's ever a moment to try, this is it. It's not that simple. What I didn't realise, even until this past year, is how small the government power base really is. Especially in this government. Your dad... Well, I don't wish to speak ill of your father to you. No, 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 go on, say it. Your father is the most towingly entitled man I've ever met. He has no talent for leadership, no sense of vocation, no drive for anything other than his own personal and political advancement, but he genuinely believes he deserves the world simply because he's him. Ego stroking. I don't know that he even thinks about it in those terms. It's 
just that he's climbed as high as he's able to climb in a democracy. He's reached the summit, snatched the prize, and still feels he deserves more. So he's using this pandemic as an opportunity to create a new, higher summit. And Leslie is there to help him climb it, because ultimately Leslie is going to be the one who ends up with the real power. I'll talk to him. When he gets here, I'll talk to him and make him see what harm he's doing. He knows, Chris. He knows exactly what he's doing. But Leslie's manipulating him. Leslie is an evil genius. Your father knows this. He actively encourages and facilitates that genius in order to gain more power. That's why the two of them have continued to stick together through the last few years. <laughs> that and the blackmail. He can't realise the full implications. He hasn't thought it through. I'll tell you something about your dad. I've seen him and Leslie go over a plan, a lie they're about to tell, or a scheme they've cooked up in detail. And then I've seen your father put that plan into action, with all the appearance of a man who is making it up on the spot. Spontaneously, candidly. Speaking honestly, off the cuff, from the heart, without any idea of the consequences. Even though he knows exactly what the consequences are, because Leslie has already spelled them out to him. But he must see that that's wrong. Oh, if someone else did it, he would. No doubt he'd denounce them from the rooftops of Downing Street. But when he's the one doing it, it's perfectly fine, because he sees himself as different, special. So many of them do. And in some twisted way, they think that justifies their actions when they stamp on the lives of other people. We have to stop them. We, we can't just let this happen. There is something you could do. What? You could tell the truth about that video when it comes out. The video? The deep fake phone footage. He wasn't in Islington that night. I know for a fact he was meeting with that hired gun. Then it's true? Of course it's true. He actually wanted to have one of his colleagues murdered? He had some dirt on your father. I don't know what, it's never come out. <laughs> Perhaps it has since, and nobody paid any attention to it. No one seems to care about political scandal these days. Nothing sticks. If nothing sticks, then why is he still denying my existence? Habit? Insurance? Because he's so focused on his own scheming it's just slipped his mind. I don't know. But I do know your father paid a man to murder one of his rifles. And the only reason it didn't happen was because the guy was as useless at his job back then as your father was. It was in the days before he had Leslie to organise everything from behind the scenes. Can't believe it. I'm sorry to be the one to disillusion you. I mean, I, I knew he was selfish and a liar and a hypocrite. And you know, I, I knew that he didn't give a fuck about his family responsibilities, but... This is a whole new level. I can't believe they'd be that kind of man. Forgive me for saying this, but I've spent far more time in his company than you have. He's exactly that kind of man. Seems he just... I don't even know him at all. <sighs> My own father know more about him than you realise. Forget about what he says and the affable, fumbling demeanour that goes along with it and think about what he actually does. You know he's the sort of man who would deny the existence of his own child. And not just one child, lots of them. And you know he's the sort of man who would abandon the mothers of those children and take no responsibility for the lives he's brought into the world. You also know he's the sort of man who would have his eldest daughter left in a home to rot without ever going to visit no. her. Okay, all right. And that no, he's no. capable of pushing that daughter so far into the back of his mind, he might even forget all about her. 
just as he forgot that the mother of one of his children died from this terrible virus just a few short months ago. And you also know he's the sort of man who gets his assistants to send fruit baskets to funerals. Even to the funeral of your mother. Why did he do that? I mean, I assumed he meant to send flowers and the order got mixed up. But... No, he always sends a fruit basket. I think he likes it because it's memorable. It marks him out as a bit eccentric and plays into his image as a funny, harmless old thing. But it's also because he thinks flowers are too personal and too public. He doesn't want a journalist to find a wreath at a graveside and start rootling into his past connections. Fruit baskets tend to stay indoors. <sighs> God, I feel sick. Your father puts himself before everyone and everything else. Always. Without exception. You know this. So is it such a stretch to believe he would consider it perfectly reasonable to have someone removed if they got in his way? <laughs> You could tell everyone what he's like, Chris. You could tell the whole world the truth, not just about the video, but about you, your siblings, Sammy. It might finally be enough. How did you know? About Sammy? You told me no, just now. No. I meant the video. How did you know about that? Oh. Wait. Well. You mean you didn't know about Sammy? Not before today. And the others? No. But you pretended to. I simply made a few assumptions based on what I did know and gave you a couple of discreet prompts. You filled in the rest. And I blurted it all out. Such a relief to talk to someone who I thought knew all about it. I'm sorry. But you knew about me. Dad told you about me. I'm afraid not. He's never mentioned you. Well, then how did you find out? Leslie? As if Leslie would tell me anything useful. <laughs> the fact is, I was listening in with my camera and sound turned off during your meeting earlier. The host can do that without being logged as a participant on the call in this new Downing Street conferencing system. I assume it's a feature Leslie asked to be built in, especially for spying purposes. The option is buried deep in the settings where most people would never find it. But I found it, and I've been listening into your father's conversations for the past two weeks. When I heard you refer to him as Dad, I wanted to find out the truth. There, now you know. And that's why he asked me to wait around online today and meet you here. Yes. And my dad, he's never coming. No. Does he even know that I'm here talking to you now? No. I see. I'm sorry. You're no better than he is. Isn't true. You scheme, you lie, you hide. What makes you think you're any less of a psycho than he is? Or Leslie? I'm not trying to overthrow British democracy. Oh, well, that makes it all right then. I'm sorry I lied to you. I've used you, I admit it. But if it, 
helps. I didn't realise quite what I was doing. I didn't realise until you told me what kind of relationship you had with him, or rather, didn't have. You got my hopes up. I know. You made me think that he wanted to see me, that he, he had something to share with me. As if, oh, as if my father would ever want to share anything with me. What an idiot. Such an idiot. No, you're not. You just wanted to believe the best of your father. That's understandable. A whole year of staying indoors, hiding from the virus, losing my mother. And how many times did you think to pick up the phone and just ask if I was all right? Not once. Losing her is... It was agony. And when he heard about it, he sent a fucking fruit basket. If I'd known about how you'd grown up, if I'd realised about you and Sammy and your other half-siblings, I wouldn't have used such a cruel trick. Yes, you would. That's how politics works. Yes, it is. And all that stuff about your dad dying, was that all a trick too, to win my sympathy? No. That's all true, I swear. How can I trust anything you say? Well, if you Google me, I do actually have a Wikipedia entry. It's mainly about my short-lived time as an MP, but there is a reference to my father in there. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the accuracy of Wikipedia never gets manipulated by anyone. God, what a fucked up world we live in. And I'm part of it. I, I, I add to the fuckery. I make the deep fakes that enable all the weasels to wriggle out of their self-made sacks. If you hadn't developed that software, someone else would have. Oh, so that makes it okay, does it? You know, when I started my company, I wanted to have fun, make people smile, but I also wanted to make a shed load of money so I could prove to my dad that I was someone, someone worth knowing. Well, you have. In his world, being someone worth knowing only happens if you're very wealthy or you can do something for him. Yeah, well, I've done it, haven't I? Finally, I've ticked all the fucking boxes and then sat back and waited for the phone to ring. The minute Leslie calls me and asks me to jump, I jump. It's understandable in the circumstances. It's a fucking disgrace. I'm a disgrace. It's true what I thought all those years ago. I should never have been born. Don't say that. Anna, I mean this in the nicest possible way, but fuck right off. Right? Right? Well, good. I, I I don't think there's anything else we need to discuss. Uh, once the vote's over, we'll issue a brief statement and then just reconvene back here to start implementing the next steps. <laughs> Can I just ask one question, Prime Minister? Yes, yes, of course. Go ahead. What are we going to do about the Queen? The Queen? Yes, the Queen. This bill will effectively deprive her of her role as head of state. At the moment, technically we're governed by a constitutional monarchy and you are the head of Her Majesty's government. That's all going to change once the emergency powers kick in. Good riddance to the lot of them. But she's still very popular. And old, people like old ladies. On top of that, she's a widow now too. And if you do anything that looks remotely disrespectful towards her, the tabloids will come after you. Maybe they haven't been more vocal about it already. The tabloids are doing as they're told, because their billionaire owners know it's bonanza time once their emergency power ship comes in. Well, 
we need to be prepared for it. Even if you just issue a statement and don't take questions, sooner or later a journalist is going to run you to ground and ask you what you have against the Queen. And I shall say, I, I, I have nothing but the highest respect for and deepest devotion to Her, Her Majesty. She, she is still the sovereign of the UK and an inspiring head of the nation uh, 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 and nothing has changed in that regard. Uh, the, the, these are emergency powers, temporary powers that we have, that have been forced upon us by the extreme situation we find ourselves in, in the middle of this terrible pandemic. Uh, they are not measures that I undertake lightly, uh, nor, nor are they designed to replace our long-term model of democracy. But in times of extreme national crisis, it makes sense for government to roll up its sleeves and get stuck into the job of- Oh, shut the fuck up. You don't get it, do you? Get what? Not you, you. Me? Yes, you. What don't I get? The whole fucking show! Once this bill is passed, there'll be no more explanations, no more interviews with the press, no more need to make up any fucking stories. The PM won't have to justify himself to anybody. But journalists will still ask questions. And we will ignore them. Then they'll say we're avoiding accountability and running roughshod over democracy. So? So? What can they do about it? Well, they could stir up the opposition. There are already mass protests. And we'll arrest them. We can't do that. Yes, we can. Or we'll be able to very shortly. The Emergency Powers Bill gives the government the authority to prohibit the publication or dissemination of any false, misleading or otherwise incendiary information that could harm the national well-being. <laughs> That's for dealing with fake news and dangerous conspiracy theories, surely. And who's to say what fake news is? What is the conspiracy and what is real? The press will never stand for it. If you arrest one of their own, they'll turn on you. Then we'll arrest them all and shut down their news outlets. <laughs> billionaires! You were just talking just now about the billionaires. You don't want to piss them off. Something tells me that journalists on their payrolls will be as good as gold. There'll be a few who'll resign in principle, but they'll be rounded up with the rest of the democracy conspiracists. The wider world? Social media? False, misleading or otherwise incendiary information. What about the police and the army? When people realise what's happening, those protest numbers are going to swell even more. And they're going to spread to every city. Things could get out of hand very quickly. Riots in the streets. Are you, are you sure the armed forces will back you on this? I have leverage with the commissioner of the police. A great deal of it. And a few more high ups in the military who are looking forward to a nice surprise landing in their Cayman Island bank account. Oh, plus, the head of the armed forces went to school with the PM. But you'll have to arrest thousands of people. Tens of thousands. The system will never cope. Oh, that's the joy of the emergency powers, Bill. New opportunities for all. I already have three or four key building developers working on plans for great new retraining centres. We'll build them in lovely remote parts of the country. Scotland, probably. And Wales. And it'll be great for local employment. So many jobs in construction and then security and, and then we'll need training facilitators. And <coughs> to do what? To train people. Or rather, retrain them. The ones who are causing trouble. It's just a question of re-education. So we'll, we'll house them for free 
in these fantastic new centers in the middle of beautiful countryside where they, they can learn all sorts of new skills and retrain to become useful members of society. Camps. You're going to build camps. No, no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Not camps. No, don't ever use that word. Retraining centers. That's what they are, right? They'll be really great. People need to feel as though they have a stake in society and this will help them to develop a more useful way of living. Thinking about it, you'd better start coming up with new ways to make yourself useful. I have a feeling that the Downing Street press office is going to become pretty obsolete in the not too distant future. Is that a threat? Just an observation. Face it, nine tenths of your job is putting out fires in the media and spinning lies to make the PM look good. There won't be any need for that after the vote. He can go on TV and say whatever the fuck he likes. My God. What? We've been talking about it for so long, but now it's in reach and I can almost taste it. The reality is sinking in. I'm not going to have to justify myself to anyone. No. I can do whatever I want, whenever I want. Yes. No, no, no need to slither around a position, no need to qualify or mollify or pretend or reassure, no need to act surprised or come up with excuses or obfuscate or waffle. It's a shame, really. It's your greatest talent. Absolute power. No one to answer to. You're taking back control. Oh, just the prospect of it's making me feel ten years younger. Just you wait. By this time next week, you're going to feel like a five-year-old. <laughs> no opposition, no press, no legal challenges, no limits. It's going to be fantastic. It is. Get a grip. Oh, right. Uh, right. Yes. <clears throat> right. Well, uh, great. So uh, that's all settled then. Uh, does anyone have any other questions? No. Uh, Anna, anything from you? No, Prime Minister, everything's running like clockwork at this end. Good, good, right. Well, I think in that case, I'm just going to, uh, well, uh, head off and get a bit of shut-eye before the vote. Ah, uh, big speech ahead and all that. The vote is in an hour, Prime Minister. Oh, right, right, but I, I, I think I have time for a power nap. <laughs> power being the operative word. <laughs> Want me to call you in 20 minutes? Yes, yes, that would be great. Absolutely. Very well. I'll see you after the vote. Are, are, are you not going to be there? Me? Why would I be there? I'm not an elected official. See ya. Turning off your camera now, Prime Minister. Right, right, great. Is this really happening? It really is. Gotta help us all. I'll see you later. If I haven't been carted off already to a retraining centre. Don't joke about it. I wasn't joking. Chris. Hi. Hi. How are you today? We have to act now. What do you mean? The bill. Uh, <clears throat> we have to act now before it all gets voted through. It's happening in an hour. 
There's no time. Look, tell me something. If you were prime minister, what would be the first thing that you would do? I'd raise taxes on big corporations and property developers, um, close the tax loopholes for billionaires, and then introduce a universal basic income. No, 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 no. I, I mean now, like right now, if you were suddenly elected prime minister in this very moment, at this very second, what would you change if you could? I'd pull the emergency powers bill from parliament. <clears throat> then that's what we're going to do. What? We're going to stage a coup on this coup. How? You saw the video, right? The deep fake. <clears throat> yes. Did you think it was convincing? Completely. Why? Because it looked so authentic, like real phone camera footage. Yeah, it was real phone camera footage. We put an actor in Barnard Park in Islington and we shot him on an actual phone camera using a streaming app to turn him into the PM in real time. You can do that. We can now. Leslie's had me working on this for months. We've built a sound and image database dedicated to my dad that's capable of matching any word or, or, or movement with one he's already made on screen. It's a good job he spent so many years mugging for the camera because it's meant we've got an almost infinite combination of looks, gestures, speech options from different periods of his life. So we made a composite of him based on how he looked 10 years ago, then merged it with some phone footage that was taken on the same spot on the actual night of the fireworks and- Amazing! There you have it, yeah. I thought it was all done with green screens. Well, it, it was, it is. I mean, our competitors are still using green screens, but this is next generation image manipulation. And right now, it's almost impossible to detect because hardly anyone knows that the capability exists. That's why Glacey's got me to make the video. And you're going to expose all this. Tell the truth. Not yet. There's no point. There's every point. People would know what the PM's capable of. People already know what he's capable of in their hearts. You were right, Anna. When you told me I know who my father was, I did know. But so did the voters. Some of them know and they like it because they feel entitled to his special treatment too and they, 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 just, they lap it up when he gets away with this stuff. Some know and pretend not to because it's easy to look away. And some know and they refuse to look away. And they're the ones who really worry me because once this bill gets passed, their lives are going to become even more difficult. Honestly, you have no idea. So then, we act. We expose him. It wouldn't make any difference. The ones who love him would still love him, even if they found out, because well, it would just be another even bigger thing that he'd gotten away with. And the ones who don't look would shut their eyes even tighter. None of them would change their minds. Then it's hopeless. Not entirely. Not for you anyway, because you're going to fulfill your teenage dreams. I'm going to marry Simon Le Bon. <laughs> no, I was actually thinking of your political dreams. But yeah. Becoming an MP? No, I tried that, didn't work. Becoming Prime Minister. Look, if you disable your firewall and download the app I'm going to send to you, you can use it to reconfigure your video conferencing settings and stream directly from my database. Which means... You can become PM. But I'm not the PM. <sighs> I'm not even... A, a... <gasps> oh. <laughs> you see? Can't possibly work. Can. I'll never be able to pull it off. You don't have to. The software will do it all for you. Whatever you say or whatever you do, it'll make you look and sound just like him on screen in real time. Although, if you could throw in a few of his catchphrases and mannerisms, well, that would help to make it perfect. I can do a possible impression of him. <laughs> it isn't hard. <laughs> well, now's the time to use it. 
I'm not ready for this. Do you think your dad felt ready when he stood out on that front line of the picket back in the 80s? He probably felt as sick in the pit of his stomach as I do right now. You don't have to do it. You can say no, but this is our only chance. I can't say no. If I don't try, I'll never forgive myself. Do you know how to disable your firewall? Yes, I'm not completely stupid. Sorry, I'm just so used to having to talk reaps through this stuff step by step. Reaps? Oh, real people as opposed to developers. We're an alien race. <laughs> Is that why you invented faths? To be accepted more easily by the humans. <laughs> You know too much. <laughs> Done. Done? All right. My firewall is down. Right, okay. Um, I'm sending you the app. Now. Okay, it'll take you a while to upload. Um, How long do we have? I guess maybe 10 minutes or less. I mean, it depends on if no. it's intercepted uh, or whether... until. Until we get caught. I don't know. Probably only a few hours, but depending on how you hold up, it's possible we could last a few days. I mean, no one's actually meeting with, up with anyone else in real life at the moment, so we might even make it to the end of the week. <laughs> I never thought I'd be grateful for the hard lockdown. <laughs> well, you're going to be PM. You could make it go on for another couple of months. No, it'll never work. He'll be straight on the phone to every journalist he knows, telling them he's been digitally kidnapped. Yeah, true, but they won't be able to actually see him if you lock him out of his video conferencing account. <laughs> and deep fakes are so convincing these days. Who's to know if a madman phoning the journalist is actually the real PM or a hoaxer? Or a conspiracy theorist. Fake news. <laughs> <laughs> there will be consequences, you know, for both of us, once we're finally rumbled. I know. Are you okay with that? I'm going to have to be. But as soon as our cover's blown, you'll take everything straight to the press. Everything. I'll set it up automatically so that if I get arrested, It'll go straight to the news outlets. Not the tabloids. No, 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 no. The independent media, what's left of it. And social media. Free dissemination of information. Free dissemination? Free of lies? Free of spin? God, if this works, we might even be free of murderous bastards who want to rule the world. Temporarily, at least. Till they catch up. Upload complete. Ah, yes, okay. Right, there's just one more thing we have to do. Yes? Right. I'll start recording this meeting and just talk at me, make gestures, do all the things you'd normally do in a conversation. Why? Because Anna Trent, faithful first assistant, needs to be there to set up the meeting. Everything's got to look normal, so we need to create a fake Anna to play you while you play the PM, and for that, I need footage. It won't be as such a convincing stream as it will be for Dad, but we don't have so much content in the database. But I mean, we only need to fake Anna for a couple of minutes. <laughs> Who's gonna play me? Don't worry. I have an ideal candidate in mind.
Am I the first one here? Yes. Yes. Good of you to get here so early, Foreign Secretary. Right, right. Yes. Great. So, this is going to be broadcast live, I believe so. The way we're going to do it is I'm going to give a bit of a speech about why this is the right thing to do, why the bill is right for the country at this time, etc, etc. What are you doing? I beg your pardon? What the fuck are you talking about? It, it's fine, Anna, it's fine. You've been under a lot of stress recently. So much work. She's been working so hard helping me with all this. You wouldn't believe. What, 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 what's going on? How is this happening? It's fine. Really, you've been overworked. My fault entirely. Now it's actually all coming to fruition. I think the poor woman's turned a little hysterical. Why do I sound like this? I look like this. Anna, what's happened to me? Yes. Right, right. It's all become a bit too much. Absolutely. I absolutely understand. So, thank you for setting up this meeting, Anna. I'll just take over now, and you can go and have a lie down. Take a nice nap. What? No. Absolutely not. This is absolutely not happening. I forbid it. Whatever it is you've done, you need to change it back right now. Leslie will kill you. Mutilate you! I forbid you to switch off my camera! You're gonna have to get rid of her. Uh, yes, right, right, absolutely. Poor thing. Uh, too much work. Oh, look at that. A whole load of MPs are waiting to get into the meeting. They've all logged on while we were dealing with the drama. Oh, do you know how to let them in? Yes. Uh, yes, I, I, I think so. Anna showed me how to do it. Several times, actually. Yes. Yes, great. There we go. Here they all come. Fantastic. Great. Gosh. Big turnout for this one. Good job we upgraded to the new system. Right then. Gosh. Loads more coming in. Welcome. Welcome. Can't see all 650 of you, of course, but um, ah, this little notification thingy is telling me that you're all here, or nearly. 649, who's missing? Does anyone know? I think it might be the transport secretary. Uh, right, right, yes. Well, he's probably running late, uh, or perhaps he's not coming. But anyway, that's absolutely fine. Great. Is everyone ready to go live? OK. Streaming live in three two, one. Welcome everyone to this uh, parliamentary session. Obviously the Speaker of the House is going to officially kick things off in a minute, but before I hand over to her I have two very important pieces of news to share with you. The first is that I am pulling the bill which was due to be placed before you for consideration today, that is the Emergency Powers Bill, of course, which I know many of you were in favour of, but many of you are also against it, including my right honourable friend, the Leader of the Opposition, who has made his feelings known to me. Also many, many members of our electorate whom we serve have been making their sentiments felt through their right to peaceful protest. They have raised their voices and I have listened. There is no doubt we are facing a very tough time in this country. A time of crisis, a time of constraint, a time when we should all be pulling together. We need stability, but we also need our democracy now more than ever before. So having taken advice on this matter, I've decided to withdraw the emergency powers bill and I have no intention of retabling it at any later date. Sorry to waste everyone's time by uh, bringing you here today, but as we've now established that we can actually get a full parliament on one conference call, perhaps this is something we should be doing more often. Hmm. My second piece of news is that Leslie Cunnings and I are no longer working together. As many of you know, Leslie and I 
have been a team for many years. And if this pandemic has shown us anything, it's that perhaps our priorities in the past haven't always been quite what they, quite the right place. This pandemic, this time at home, has given many of us a chance to reflect, recalibrate, and where necessary, change direction. And so Leslie has decided to put family first and retire from politics in order to spend more time with them. I wish the Cunnings all the best, especially young Rollo. And I want to congratulate the House on passing today the most sweeping tax reforms this country has ever witnessed. Not only will these laws raise a vital revenue stream for our public services, they will also aid the redistribution of wealth that is so badly needed. Anna? Anna! Anna, you have to speak to me. Leslie is threatening to go to the press, going to leak everything and denounce me as totally unethical. Jesus. Anna, are you there? What? What do you mean she must be there if she's let me into the meeting? Oh, right, 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 yes, yes. I see. Uh, Anna, look. I had to get my eight-year-old to set this up for me, and she's telling me that you definitely have to be there, otherwise I wouldn't be here. Or something. Anna! Anna! Turn your fucking camera on!